What's going on everyone? Brian's here. Today is Wednesday, September 29th, 2021. Jumping right into it, what we're looking at is the 30 minute time frame of the SPY listed up here. This is a 20 day time frame. The amount of days is not necessarily going to be relevant. What's more important is that we're looking at the 30 minute time frame right here. What you guys can see is this blue and uh, yellowish gold line right here. The link to this custom thinkorswim indicator is in the description down below. It's a tweak to the built-in volume profile indicator in Thinkorswim. I tweaked the code to get it to match some other platforms, predominantly NinjaTrader, as well as hopefully make it a little bit easier for some of you guys to understand and also use. Now, if this is the first time you're looking at the volume profile, real quick, just to let you know, the blue area right here, this blue gradient, this blue shaded area is, is known as the value area. I'm using 65% of all the volume for each traded day. Some people use 70, I use 68% because because that's the one because that's one standard deviation and what you see right here this gold yellow line is what's known as the volume point of control i'm hoping to demystify or explain the the volume point of control make things a little bit clearer as well as help show you guys some real case scenarios of how you can use it in your day trading so i'm hoping this video will answer a lot of questions that you guys have been asking now what's not often mentioned whenever you think about the volume profile is usually this right here so you see i have this label as a vpoc the poc stands for point of control and the v means virgin point of control Virgin points of controls are previous points of controls that have not been touched and they're very important for future price action. If you look at my chart, you'll also notice that I don't have the extended hours on. This is pretty important whenever you're analyzing tickers like the SPY as well as the Qs or any individual ticker for that matter. If you're looking for extended hours, I would highly recommend you actually check out the futures. So the ES or the NQ NASDAQ futures, because that's going to show a proper pretty much 24 seven type of trading activity. And whenever you're plotting out the virgin point of controls, we'll get to that in a few minutes. I'll show you guys the difference between using the spy as well as the uh, ES in comparison. But what I actually do is I have my settings set to look like this. I turn off the candlesticks because I don't want to be distracted by candlestick price action, as well as I don't want to be distracted by all of the colors I want to just focus in on the actual points of control so in other words if I was to delete this right here just so you guys can see this right here would be a virgin point of control because it is a point of control that has yet to be touched during the regular trading market hours now that's important because I've, I have received the question a few times what happens if it's touched during the overextended hours that's not relevant it has to be touched during market open times so to plot that out, you could just, you know, draw a price level on the chart right here. But, but once you have a few of them on your chart, you can actually just duplicate this right here and then drag it over. It makes it very simple and easy. So I update about 20 stocks pretty much daily, and it takes me less than 10 minutes to just go through all of them, just making quick adjustments and quick tweaks whenever whenever any of these levels get touched. So in terms of management, what I'm looking for is, let's just say the SPY was to bounce later in this week and we came up to this level, this VPOC is going to act as a very strong resistance, especially intraday. Once this level gets touched, when the market is closed, I'll actually just delete the line because I don't wanna clutter my charts with too many levels on it. And I pretty much just pay attention to the points of controls, virgin points of controls, as well as an algorithm that I use, but this video is not about the quant trading app algorithm. I do have a link in the description down below if you are interested in checking it out or if you're interested in joining the discord but again this video is not about that the more familiar you get with the point of control or the more familiar you get with understanding how to use the virgin point of control i'm pretty sure it's really going to improve your trading so the reason we're focusing on the 30 minute time frame is because it comes straight from the market profile analysis professional futures traders for the most part tend to read the market profile if you've never seen the market profile this is what it looks like right here the market profile or also called the tpo which stands for time price opportunity is pretty much showing the time in which price has traded at a certain level so in other words whenever you see these letters it's indicating a certain time a is the start of the session so the and each block represents 30 and each letter represents 30 minutes so a a a a a this is all showing 30 minutes right here and it goes all the way to b c d e f g and so forth into the alphabet now, personally, I don't trade using the market profile. I can read the market profile, but I prefer the volume profile. So if you want to know what the difference is in this particular case right here, where you see this POC, it's saying that this is the point of control for the market profile. So right here, and this right here would be the point of control for the volume profile. So in other words, what we know now about the volume profile is this would be the price in which this particular stock or futures or whatever it is, this would be the price that the most amount of contracts or shares were traded. 
in contrast to this right here, it's saying during the H session, the I session, the O, K, L, M. So in other, in other words, all these different sessions here, it's saying that this is where time was spent the most during this trading day. So in other words, this price has the most amount of time associated with it, and this price has the most amount of volume associated with it, if that makes sense. So in other words, let's simplify things for a second. If we go back to this right here, or we just use a more practical example. Imagine you went into a grocery store and you saw that the price of apples was trading for $1.50. Now imagine if every single day, we'll say that there's a thousand apples that's you know bought and sold at this marketplace, and Imagine out of the thousand, eight hundred of those apples get sold for a hundred and for a dollar fifty. That's pretty much saying eighty percent of all the volume of apples for that day has transacted around a dollar fifty. That dollar fifty is what would be known as the point of control because it's the price with the majority of the amount of apples that have been traded. Now, when we think about the market profile, the market profile is going to look for how much time did apples actually trade at that price. So in other words, we can have the point of control, the volume point of control at $1.50, but imagine if someone came in and bought all 800 apples in, in one transaction at $1.50, but imagine if the other 200 apples were traded at around $2.00. And more importantly, imagine if they spent about four hours trading around $2. So yes, 800 apples were traded at $1.50, but that happened in one transaction. So it was one person that came in and let's just say they were only doing it for about one minute. It meant that out of, let's just say this marketplace is open for five hours. It means out of the five hours, only time only spent one minute at a dollar fifty, but it spent the other four hours and fifty nine minutes trading around two dollars. That would be the market profile. The market profile would show you the difference in time. The market profile is going to show that time was spent more at two dollars, even though there was more transactions that are even though there was more apples that were traded at $1.50. Hopefully that practical scenario actually explains things a little bit better or the difference between the market profile versus the uh, volume profile. But just know this is kind of where the 30 minute time frame comes from. It's because these blocks or these letters pretty much indicate 30 minutes. This is another way in which the charts would look or this is another example. Sometimes you don't even need the letters on it you can color coordinate it and a couple of these screenshots are from the ninja trader platform which is what i use whenever i'm trading futures so this study is pretty much replicating that but using the volume profile because it's most of us i'm assuming if you're watching this video you tend to trade off of candlesticks and a lot of this information can get a little bit excessive or it can make things pretty difficult so i'm trying to simplify it for you guys but just pay attention to the gold levels right here and use the 30 minute time frame and all you're pretty much going to do is just find a level that has not been touched draw the line extend it out change the color if you want and just make sure you label it as vpoc and if we were to uh imagine if this so again if this did not exist right here i'll remove it and i'll draw one for you guys from scratch if we come right up here i'm just going to double click this right here and then change this come right here i like to keep my lines as dash and then i'm using this gold right here and then i'm just going to type in vpoc and then make sure its show name is set to the right i keep my right extension on my left extensions are usually always off and then here we go so once this level gets touched what i will usually do is i would either delete it or if i think it's going to come into the play in a future date i'll just remove the v so that way i just know it's a previous point of control but for the most part i don't keep too many of them too many of them on my chart so this is what it looks like if we jump back to the candlesticks right here, this is what it looks like with color. And then if we were to uh, just jump forward right here, we can see this is what it would look like on an intraday time frame. So we already have a clear potential resistance level for if the SPY got up to here, because we can expect it to be selling. Now, why is there going to be selling here? Is because there's pretty much a ton of supply, presumably a ton of supply at this level, because there's a lot of volume that occurred at this price here last week. So there was a lot of volume that transacted in this price range here and all the buyers that were buying up the spy here last week are pretty much trapped and they're going to look to sell when we get back up at the when we get when we get back up at this level for hopefully a break even thus creating supply or in other words there's a lot of inventory up here think of this think of it this way if there were a ton of people that bought you know thousands of t-shirts for a price at this level and they're looking to sell them they're not going to want to sell them down at this level because at this point they're going to have to take a loss 
on what they purchase and in this case it's t-shirts so once price comes back up to this level everyone that bought the t-shirts up here they realize that they actually purchase it at a bad price they're probably probably going to want to get out of the position or in other words get rid of the inventory and that's where the supply comes from so there's a think of it this way there's millions of t-shirts up here bunch of people that bought it for a bad price and they want to get out as soon as they can and then hopefully buy it back cheaper because if price was to come up to here and we did somehow somehow get rejected we're probably we're probably going to come back to another point of control and that's where price would hold before we potentially push higher we zoom out we go to the daily time frame so whenever you're drawing out your virgin points of controls you want to pay attention to where's the next you know Where's the closest VPOC that can act as support and where's the closest VPOC that will act as resistance and keep it pretty simple. You can see how this chart is pretty clean because these are the only major levels I need to pay attention to right now. So we know there's probably going to be some kind of demand here. And if you don't know anything about supply and demand, the way this would pretty much work is this zone right here was powerful enough to actually push the market up and break a new all time high because this was the all time high. So it took a lot of buying pressure that loaded up presumably here and price has yet to ever retest retest this level since the breakout so a pullback to this level is very strong because it's going to be the first time in which it has come back here once this point of control gets touched and it's no longer virgin it's not going to be as strong so you want to be here on the first time it gets touched if we switch over to the cues zoom in we can actually see similar situation if we dive in a little bit uh, smaller we can already see there's a lot more virgin point of controls now a futures trader is going to look at this and say like this is a lot of potentially pure poor structure whenever you have this much virgin point of points of controls it means the market is not really trading properly because generally during a normal trading session if we have a uh, this was a, at one point a virgin point of control but as you can see it was touched right here so that's why i removed it but you don't want to see this many points of controls popping virgin points of controls popping up everywhere without it being touched again so eventually once the market does uh, recover does bounce back these levels are all going to be touched and then we can delete all of them but the fact that the market is creating so many on the way down is actually not a good sign if you notice here at the end of every trading session i'll add in the virgin point of control for that day because yes the point of control for today will always be a virgin point of control unless it's touched the following day so in other words if the cues were to open up here tomorrow and then push up this would be our new virgin point of control and it would stay here forever until the cues eventually came back down and touched it so i always have the most recent point of control up and this right and this right here for you scalpers for you day traders that like to trade early in the day this is where you can set yourselves up for some really great trades so if we jump over to some individual tickers i'll actually show you guys a tesla there was a ton of great trading opportunities on tesla this week but let's pay attention to this right here so right off the back we have this vpoc here and then we have this point of control here but this is monday's price action right here and this was the point of control from monday so it was the vpoc on uh, tuesday which was yesterday if we jump to the intraday time frame let's go to a five minute time frame we can see tesla opened up down here and then price rallied and got rejected right at this uh, VPOC from the previous day. And that's when it was touched. So that's actually when I changed it. Now, if you're nervous and you don't know if like you want to short it right here, you can wait for confirmation. You can use a smaller time frame. I tend to trade off of the five. The smallest time frame in which I would go to is the three minute time frame. See if you see some sort of an indication to sell there, to sell or buy puts up here. I'm pretty sure if you looked at the tape or if you were looking at level two, there would have been an indication that there was a big seller here, but you can be aware of where the big seller is going to be before price gets to the level. And anyone that has resistance up here or anyone that has resistance up here is pretty much going to miss out on the A plus setup because they're not aware of where the virgin point of control is. Now, granted, anything over the uh, virgin, virgin point of control in this particular situation could be interpreted as supply. So we pretty much know we don't want to be buying calls or buying shares of Tesla as it's running up into this level. The trade in which I caught on it, because I actually missed this trade at the time, I was actually trading the uh, SPY, I was more focused on the futures at the time, was right here. And this 
if you've seen any of my previous videos is one of my bread and butter setups it's pretty much the 50 percent retracement after a rejection from a supply zone or something like that you can see this is the 50 percent retracement right in confluence with vwap so it's a very low risk trade because my stop is pretty much right over here the previous uh candle or if i'm going to give it a little bit more room depending on my size there's the break over the 61 percent retracement will be my stop loss and pretty much always going to look to target the lower day next profit target is down here at the negative 23 percent retracement so my trades is not really relevant for this YouTube channel every now and then I'll talk to you guys or I might show a trade recap for a trade in which I took it's more so trying to educate you guys on approaching the markets differently as well as looking at things that you might not be aware of and how you can incorporate it in a style in which you may already have from trading but this right here is an example of how it can be used for a day trade just using so whenever whenever there's a point of control and there's a gap after it's pretty much any day there's a gap it's one of the things that i sit back and wait for because i generally don't always trade at the open i like to trade off of very key levels and by key levels i don't just mean like support and resistance levels i'm referring to levels that the algorithm from quant trading app prints out and if i haven't mentioned by the way i'm the lead developer on the quant trading app algorithm so Full disclosure there, but for the most part, I rely on the levels from the algorithm as well as points of controls because it's non-discretionary. Machines and program machines and algorithms are programmed to read these levels, so it's not left up, it's not left up for interpretation. The virgin point of control the virgin point of control from Monday is factual. That's actually where it is, no matter what platform you're using. The only variation you might experience is if you're using a different time frame. Sometimes the virgin point of control might fluctuate. And you guys might actually discover something new if you're using a different time frame, but just know for everyone else, they're more than likely using the 30, the 30 minute time frame. If we take a look at, uh, let's jump back here and let's take a look at another ticker. So for example, a shop and what we have right here, here goes a uh, virgin point of control because price, because price has not come up to this level. Here is a, it was once a virgin point of control. So let's actually jump to that day and see what happened. See, this was our point of control right here. For this day, it was the virgin point of control. The following day, price gets rejected right at it at the open and then sells off. If we jump to, let's go to zoom. Um, and what we could see here, so I left this one up as an example. Let me go back here. I left this up as an example to show you guys how it would look like. This was once a virgin point of control. The following day, zoom gapped up ended up running but then the following day we came back right down to this uh vpoc at the time and now it was just a point of control i left this one up again just to show you guys so if we jump to the intraday time frame we can see right here let's zoom in price runs up comes back down to this v to the vpoc ends up putting in a really nice bounce now granted sometimes you can just you can just plot out you know support and resistance and it might coincide with a vpoc but again that's left to discretionary terms because not because you're probably gonna end up having a line down here that's gonna come in and play another day. You're gonna have a line down here, you're gonna have a line down here, and you, before you know it, your chart's gonna end up having to look like uh, something like this with a ton of different stuff. I don't like to have that many lines on my charts, so to keep it simple, I just pay attention to the ones that's the most important, which would be the points of control. Lastly, let's jump to the futures because that's where a lot of this comes from and where a lot of the, uh, the uh, actual points of controls, market profile, volume profile comes from. And for the ES, you can see this is the main level in which I'm looking for the market to come down to, if it ever does, to really start going long again, buying calls potentially for who knows, an all-time high, you know, three three months out calls, leaps, anything like that. But as I mentioned earlier, if you see already on this chart, there isn't that many uh, VPOX, and that's because whenever I'm pointing, whenever I'm plotting out the points of controls, I'm going to use the uh, ES in comparison or in conjunction with the SPY. So the SPY had some virgin point, points of controls up here, but as you can see, this was once a point of control on the ES. If we extend this out right here, you can see it was actually touched during the overnight session. I know it's the overnight session because of the volume. There's not much of it. And then it was actually touched over here. There wasn't any volume. So on, on this chart, it's not going to have the same uh, point of control that the spy chart has so i'll just put this in here right now so you guys can see turn the uh, candlesticks back on with color so we can see it was actually touched a couple times so if you are interested in the overextended the overnight or the extended hours activity i would suggest just take a look at the uh, es the uh and cues you can plot your points of controls there you'll get a lot less virgin points of controls because they tend to be touched 
but I would also encourage you to plot them out on the SPY and the Qs, so that way you can see which points of controls have not been touched during the market session. I'll leave a link in the description to a previous video in which I did on the points of controls because I pointed out some other things about how you can look at the value areas and how they increase and decrease and how you can use that to gauge direction for the market as well as momentum. You can kind of use it for exits and entries for trades also, but I really wanted to do a video dedicated just on the POCs and the VPOC. I wish I was using the VPOC a lot sooner earlier on in my trading career. I'll also leave a link in the description down below to the first book in which I read on volume profile. It was by Trader Dale. I think it's a very simple, easy introduction to the volume profile. And if you're interested in learning more, you should probably check out the market profile. I don't think you necessarily need it for your trading, but if you're looking to really understand what's going on as well as what pro pro level futures traders are thinking, look into the market profile. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. And if you really want to contact me and talk to me via DMs or even hop on the mic with me, the links to my Discord are in the description down below. It's the same Discord as the Quant Trading App Discord, but that's probably the best way to get in contact with me. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.